Dr. Ku Ching Li, Emerald Director, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank for giving me to the ASEAN Plus 3 Economic Cooperation and Financial Stability Forum. It is a great honor for me to deliver a keynote speech at this forum, Forging Resilience and Sustainability Amid Uncertainty. The theme for this event carries with its significant implications and is highly relevant given the current situation. Distinguished participant, I would like to bring to your attention the current global and regional economic situation, which highlights the uncertainties we are facing these days. A possibility of global recession has attracted great attention. The global economy is showing clearer signs of slowdown due to sticky inflation. The gradual withdrawal of the stimulus packages that had been in place since the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic and the tightening of monetary policies by major central banks to tackle inflation have caused global financial tightening, raised borrowing costs for both the public and the private sectors created imbalances in the foreign exchange market and slowed down the economic recovery. The slowdown has negatively affected global aggregate demand. China economic slowdown has spilled over the other ASEAN plus three member countries through trade and financial links. The prolonged war in Ukraine has kept global commodity prices high and volatile and kept Europe entangled in the energy crisis. Given these current challenges, a global recession is not impossible but unlikely. These challenging situations were a wake-up call for us to find new ways to achieve sustainable and inclusive growth. One way to do so is to develop the ecosystem conducive to digitalization of the digital economy and financing for sustainable development. I believe these key areas could be new priorities for regional financial cooperation in ASEAN plus three. To strengthen regional financial cooperation, I think there are two major issues. First, the digitalization for digital economy. With technology being as powerful as it is, in particularly during the peak of COVID-19 pandemic, it is obvious that digital transformation has taken center stage. Digitalization has also been a revolutionary force for growth, utilized in equal measure by the private and the public sector alike. Digitalization has proven effective in revenue collection, greatly enhancing the government's capacity for domestic resource mobilization. In the private sector, finance is one of the fields which the force of digitalization has enveloped. Digitalization has enabled financial innovation that could result in new business models, applications, processes, or products with an associated material affected on financial markets and institutions and the provision of financial services. Just as physical infrastructure connected trade routes, the broader network of payment provides digital connectivity, which allows transactions to flow more broadly and more efficiently with reduced transaction costs. Why the benefit of digitalization in the financial sector may be extensive. It is undeniable that payment and remittance services are at the forefront of digital finance. Therefore, we should cooperate and promote payment linkages among ASEAN plus three members to facilitate trade and investment, tourism, workers' remittances, as well as people-to-people -people connectivity, which will eventually promote financial inclusion in the region. In addition, 
As the host of APEC FMM 2022, Thailand has developed the APEC policy consideration for developing cross-border payment and remittances. As one of the deliverables for this year's APEC Finance Minister Process, or FMM, I believe this policy recommendation will also be a great benefit to ASEAN Plus 3 members as a reference to initiate new cross-border payment linkages in ASEAN Plus 3 region. And why ASEAN Plus 3 cooperation on digitalization is still at a nascent stage. This gives us the opportunity to take a bold step and explore additional areas of cooperation. We can build on from current discussion in ASEAN Plus 3 on financial digitalization or FINDIC and try to create an ecosystem where FINDIC can play a larger role in increasing access to finance for individuals and SMEs alike. The ASEAN Plus 3 Working Group on Enhancing Policy Coordination for Technological Advancement also provides a platform for which we can come up with innovative ideas on how to best harness the power of digitalization for the benefit of the region. Furthermore, Thailand is cooperation with OECD has produced the policy recommendations paper digitalization of physical measures and policy innovations during the COVID-19 pandemic, which highlights the role that digital technologies have played during the pandemic in the following five sectors, taxation, finance, public governance, education and health. The recommendations from the paper can also be applied for the ASEAN Plus 3 region. Secondly, on financing for sustainable development, why globalization might have had an overall positive effect on the world economy. It also brings with it some challenges. One such challenge is climate change. Shifting weather patterns are amplifying the natural risks we already face. Floods, storms, heat and drought leading to more frequent and extreme loss events. Therefore, it is of no surprise that sustainable finance, as well as the transition to a greener and cleaner economy, are issues that have been discussed at length in several fora, including ASEAN Plus 3 and APEC. This issue has also been discussed in APEC culminating in the policy recommendation paper, APEC policy recommendation on sustainable finance, a deliverables under the APEC FMM this year. We are more than happy to share this paper to ASEAN Plus 3 for your per perusal. Although addressing climate change and social problems have always been top priorities for the global agenda, the role of financial markets in driving the change towards sustainability has yet to be fully leveraged. The finance ministry should therefore work to improve the finance sector's role in driving sustainable development and projects and promoting and eventually normalizing sustainable finance instruments and products, disaster prevention and mitigation tools, and other market-based sustainable finance mechanisms. Moreover, it is apparent that, that the work on climate mitigation, environmental adaptation, and sustainable development promotion requires tremendous financial resources. It would need more than any government budget or private pledges. Rather, it needs partnership among governments, financial institutions, financial intermediaries, investors, beneficiaries to work together in multiple areas, 
in particular, the creation of a supportive ecosystem for sustainable development. The ASEAN Plus 3 can be the forum to foster such partnership through exchange of knowledge and ideas. We can complete ASEAN Plus 3 our policies and their implementation so that the ecosystem conducive to transition finance can effectively be created. In addition, we cannot overlook the role of the ASEAN Plus 3 financial think tank network in advancing digitalization and achieving sustainability. The brainstorming and collaboration under this network can lead to a proliferation of ideas, which could in turn lead to more efficient and tangible outcomes in both key areas. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, it is my wish that our financial cooperation in ASEAN Plus 3 can inch us closer to achieving the transition to green economy and digitalization of our economy. With that, we can foster long-lasting resilience and sustainability in the region as we so aspire to. Thank you very much.